For coming this school year for Clay County students, two new programs, computer programs, will be added to the curriculum. Several schools have new principals, and more kids can now take advantage of free breakfast and lunch. Superintendent Addison Davis is joining us now to discuss these changes, plus, of course, a focus on student safety. Good morning to you. Thanks for being here. I Good morning. It. Thanks for having Full me. Full disclosure for our viewers who, for some reason, are not familiar, you were the chief of, of schools in Duval County, so you've been teaching, you were teaching, what, 18 years, started out at Lee High School, so very well known here in Duval. County and now in Clay County. That said, uh, you're bringing two programs that you help implement in Duval County and adding them to the curriculum in Clay, specifically iReady as well as Achieve 3000. I know all about these because my <laughs> kids are in Duval County schools. So our viewers in Clay County, they hear this, oh, a change in curriculum, it makes them nervous. What can you tell them about these two programs? Yes, exciting launch to uh, the school year is forthcoming on the 15th, and we're really excited about taking two um, areas of curriculum and really helping our learners. We're moving away from the one-size-fits-all approach mm -hmm. and moving more to a prescribed learning uh, platform that will help our students not only meet grade-level expectations, but also go along and push forward with accelerated opportunities. Um, Achieve 3000 I Ready are more of a blended opportunity opportunity that allows us to differentiate instruction to, mid, to help our students uh, to, uh, to with standard and skill-based remediation, but it really comes on board to allow us to move away from whole group instruction and really drive down to small group instruction to help the learner and then move around, move down to uh, to one-on-one in, uh, personalized learning opportunities for our kids. So. And I would just tell our viewers what they're looking at right now is actually part of the iReady program specifically geared towards multiplication. And what's interesting about this for parents at home and students, you need to have access to a computer, hopefully at home, but are you also going to make that available for students who maybe don't have a computer at home? Yes, ma'am. The, the, what we want to do with these two platforms and allow our learners and our parents to, to be exposed to, the, to these platforms before, during, and after school. So we will have a number of initiatives that we push out to make sure that our digital natives are prepared. Uh, we will work collectively with our local uh, libraries in order, in order to make sure that our students who do not have access have access. And then look, working with uh, local business partners to really provide um, uh, equipment where needed and then uh, reduce price into internet access in order to, to make sure our students are exposed and have the equity and resources they need to be successful academically. And to make sure that it's, it's clear, iReady reading will be through K through third, iReady math, K through six, and Achieve 3000 will be offered all the way through 10th grade as well. Yes, ma'am. Will these programs be somehow tied to their advancement to the next level? And the, there will be some uh, diagnostics before the year and end of the year, and it, it may allow us to use an additional diagnostic to help students who want to go uh, beyond to have AP courses, honors courses, and advanced coursework. But we will couple and triangulate those data sets along with um, the FSA and EOC assessments outlined by the state of Florida as well. So if they don't well. do well on these tests, it doesn't mean that they won't be promoted to the next level? Correct. And the state allowed us to, to use iReady as an indicator to move students uh, for promotion requirements for, for third grade this year. So it's a great initiative. To, to implement and use within our infrastructure. And really, it helps them prepare. I mean, I love the program yeah, it's, for my It's great. Daughter. My I mean, kids love reading, it as well. It is. It's reading comprehension. It's wonderful in particular. Eight elementary schools now getting new principals. I'd love to mention all of them, but two <laughs> in particular, you brought in outside candidates. Why did you feel that you needed to do that at Fleming Island and Thunderbolt Elementary? Yeah, I mean, finding uh, new leaders that are innovative and transformational are always difficult to do. And Clay County has some great internal candidates, but I, I believe it's a great opportunity to, to have individuals who are uh, not within Clay County to come in and to think differently and to push a system. And uh, Fleming Line and Thunderbolt are, are really great environments. That and uh, we have hired some first round draft picks to come to uh, to Clay County, and they understand how to be transformational leaders, instructional leaders, uh, talent managers, um, climate and culture builders, in more than just being an, an operational expert. These two leaders are really ready to lead in Clay County, and they have historically had uh, data to show they understand how to improve student achievement, but more importantly, engage our community and our faith-based partners to in order to have a 360 accountability to move our school system and, forward. And you know them well because they both came from <laughs> Duval County, so yes, they certainly have that teaching background yes, that you're looking for. Excited. Do you want to talk about school safety, um, particularly on campus, obviously? Uh, we, we did some, uh, some digging and found that fights in particular on campus did increase from uh, the previous school year, so 2015 to, to 2016, to the 2016-17 year. So basically, 33 fights two years ago on campus, up 56 last year. What can you do to stop that number um, from growing? I, I would say this is more of an accurate number from 16-17. Upon, upon me taking on the leadership role as superintendent, I wanted to make certain that we captured every incident so that we can really problem solve, determine what's working, what's not, and what we can do differently in reference to a climate and culture and safety's perspective. I will tell you, Clay County teachers 
are doing a fantastic job gaining access to our students and we have a great safe environment in, in, in our school system. And we are going to work to make certain that we continue to build relationships for uh, the mental health side. We've got to go deeper and broader than just reading the math textbooks. We've really got to focus on developing the whole child. And we will work, continue to work with the uh, Tony Baselli Foundation, St. Vincent's, um, Baptist, Clay Behavioral, in order to, um, to have access for our students to really deal with crisis, how to problem solve, how to collaborate, how to critically think, and really give them the 21st century skills they need in order to be successful, not only in the classroom, but outside the classroom as well. And sometimes just counting to 10 and teaching them <laughs> to do that, right? That's right. Now, we had three questions that we okay. posted on Facebook. Um, I'm going to skip the first one because okay. it's going to take a little longer <laughs> running out of time, and we're going to have you answer that later and post okay. it on Facebook. But the second one uh, involves from uh, Red, Red Riot, okay. and the question is, is where are the schools, specifically Orange Park High School, going to, when are they going to actually start using the Google Apps for Education platform that apparently they already have? Yeah, so we are trying to launch that. I think they did a lot of, of that legwork at the end of the year last year, but we're trying to launch that at scale through all of our high schools to make sure they have access to our Google Doc system. And uh, I think that's a greater way for interaction between uh, our learners and our teachers. So we've got a great IT department that uh, our, 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 our Google natives and uh, so they can look forward to that to the 17-18 school year and having that positive interaction with that platform. So it'll be this school year then? Because yes, Because I know parents are frustrated not being able to timely find out oh, what yes, their kids' grades are. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, two other questions that we're going to ask um, specifically in involving employee health care plans yep. as well as transgender bathrooms. Okay. We're going to have you ask those uh, in the newsroom. We'll post that on Facebook. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. you so Davis very much for having me. I do me. appreciate it. We also want to mention that, uh, that students at 12 elementary schools in Clay County will now receive free breakfast and lunch starting August 15th, obviously the first day of uh, school. This is a list of all of them. We know that's a lot of information for you. You do not have to fill out an application, which is what's so unique about these. And meals will be available to all students at these schools. We're going to post this list with this entire interview on the Morning Show page of newsforjax.com.